Folks, welcome back. Oh, I hope you're keeping well. I'm out in the Shield Forest National Nature Reserve as usual. Can't get enough of the place. Some of my friends. And, uh, oh boy. And, uh, there's some more down there. There. Yeah, I'm in the Shield Forest National Nature Reserve and I'm headed over to parts of the main touristy trail. I've not been up there for a long time and I've made it a bit difficult for myself this morning because I've, I've parked on the northern side and the touristy trails are on the southern side so but I, I got I got time today so I can take it steady and make my way in and just shoot what I see as I go and then I got to thinking you know what why not just mix it up a little bit and my intention for today is to shoot a POV video so strap the GoPro to my chest and try and explain two or three compositions how I select a shot from a scene. It's pretty chilly, it's only about six or seven degrees right now. I think we've probably got a couple more degrees coming today but it's not going to become hot. Forecasts about 50% for showers. Um, come what may I'm going to kick around for a few hours and just see how I get on. So. I'm going to put some food out here for the birds and then I'm going to break my camera out and the next time you hear me will be when I find a composition when I just try to explain the scene. Let's give it a go. <laughs> I'll see you in a bit. Bye for now. Okay, so, so that's my essential view. Effectively, we've got this one tree over here somewhere, this tall, thin thing. Then we've got this more considerable chat with this uh, young green thing in front of it. A couple of silver birch, hollowed out oak there. And as I came down here and I lost the green thing, and got more of the face of this tree that one appeared behind it so i'm thinking about a composition that excludes this green thing and picks up on these two predominant trees now i'm shooting at 24 mil i'm on a tamron 24 mil f 2.8 di3 osd m1 to 2 I don't know how well this is going to pick up on the GoPro. It's a bit of an experiment today, so you'll just have to bear with me. There's the green bush that I want to eliminate. And that's the frame I'd like to find a composition on. The morning light is behind us, so it's hitting the face of the larger tree at the front here. And that evens out the light in the frame, so it should create for a better, a better overall exposure. I don't mind a bit of old branchage there, but... 
yeah, it's okay. It's okay. We can still see the face of the tree behind it. And I'm just evaluating the scene like this. I'm just thinking about what I see of interest, what I can make of it. I love the gnarly branches up above. And the front kind of complements those at the back and the intertwined nature of it is just, I find mesmerizing anyway. So how do I pick up a composition here? Let me dial that up a little bit. So shooting 24 mil, I'm quite wide, so I can get a little bit closer. The closer I get, obviously, the more I'm going to eliminate from this frame. So I'm just going to work out where I want my composition. Now, because I've got this green bush over here on the left, I want that out of frame. So my composition can start roughly from that point, and that's not bad. I quite like the major trunk on the left hand thirds. I'm going to position it down to the base of frame but give myself a slight area for crop if I need it. I'm paying attention to my horizon level so that it's not a wonky donkey shot. I'm two stops overexposed there, so I'm dialing down my ISO. I know it's gonna get dark because of the light situation today. I'm just gonna refocus in on that trunk. It's not gonna shift much. And I take a shot. And that's it. Now for me, this is often how it goes. I don't spend a huge amount of time walking scenes, trying to find compositions. As soon as I see something I like, I shoot it. And then often what happens is, as I'm moving about, <laughs> a better scene appears. And then I start to think twice about what I've just shot, as I am doing now. So how does this compare? Having a little bit of separation between these two trees reduces the amount of the branches that are in the scene, cutting off this chap. We've still got stuff interfering, but it fills out the frame a lot better. I'll still shoot at f4. I'm going to focus on this near tree. I'm going to add a little bit more of the, the brush for texture at the base. And then I'm going to move because the flies are coming in. I'm using spot autofocus. making a couple of fine adjustments as I go. If I'd have walked any further down this path, the gap between these trees would have increased. I'd have lost any shot that would have included them both. I could still get one on this boy. In fact, I might just do that for reference. Dial down that exposure. And we're off.
robins everywhere. <laughs> oh, I'll let them get some food. Take two steps back and then they'll come in. Here they come. There he is. Hello, fella. Brave little robins. That's why they're so fat. <laughs> they get first dibs. <laughs> there he comes. Oh, you're beautiful. Was that a pecker? I'm not sure if that was a woodpecker. It is, yeah. Oh, there's another one. <laughs> Trying to crack that peanut. <laughs> Sparrow's just above us. Hello, boys. Oh, let's leave them in peace. Oh, hey, up, mate. Food's that way. It's over there. Just, just, just down there on that table. I'll tell you what. That's going to shoot the major oak while we're here. Sorry. Boom. Oh, peanut shells everywhere. This sky is still really bright today. It's not helping at all. And it's the, it's not so much the sky, it's the contrast, because everywhere is quite dull. There's not a lot of color, so it's quite challenging. Let's try around this side where his front door is did a video last year and there was a, a brand new shoot at the entrance it was a single stick it was nothing more than that and it was just off to the left hand side of the entrance way and there's a whole flaming tree coming up there look that's epic that is really really cool and if you can see the entrance way the curved entrance way there on the right the little window on the left that green stuff is uh, protective covering they put on to save that, that woodwork there. And apparently some scum sucking pond dweller came last year and uh, snapped a great big chunk of it off. <sighs> hey how hey. There's always one reed. Not saying it. Still too bright, look, it's really tough. What an amazing tree, eh? <laughs> Believed to be in excess of a thousand years old. Epic. Right, let's not get too distracted. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to head in here. Uh, this is a bit more my kind of woodland. A, here's a nice tree, remnants of a tree. Dead old oak. If you look at how top heavy it is, I love this thing. I absolutely love it. It's not really a sensible shot on here. Um, but I always try. It's a difficult area here. There's so much. The background gets too exciting, the foreground's too exciting, and then it's hard to isolate subjects, that's what I'm saying. You can do it on foggy days, that's when the fog really helps because it separates uh, the images close to you from the background, so this is an epic place to come and shoot on foggy days. Right, I'm going to go down there and I'm going to shoot those guys in a minute. They're twins of, in every degree, they're twins. They must have come from the same acorn, them two fellas. Beautiful, beautiful trees. And at 24 mil, I should be able to get them both in nicely. But before I do, let me introduce the vagina tree. I'm sorry. It's huge. The tree is huge. 
fantastic outreached arms. <laughs> Can't imagine how old he is. Well, I guess it's a she. But uh, twist on the bark there is phenomenal. Well, the GoPro doesn't do it justice, but face to face, it's stunning. Absolutely stunning. And his neighbours over here. It's a beautiful gateway into the park. And then the twins. These trees also really, really make a, a nice shot in the fog. And they're easy to get a composition on because there's not a lot else around there that's particularly distracting. There's one tree in the background, but it's not too gnarly, so it's quite a nice little composition to be had here. So that's the vagina tree. I just like saying vagina, don't I? Vagina. And that's the uh, the dead oak. Really, really lovely, that thing. Really, really lovely. Vagina. But for now, I'll go back POV, get a shot on these boys. And uh, I'll head down there, actually, just quickly, because there's another tree in the background. It's a lovely... There's, there's three of them, all in close proximity to one another. And I've had some reasonable shots down there, but never really paid it a huge amount of attention. So I'll get a shot on these two, and then I'll go down there and get a shot on those, see what we can come away with. Okay. Push out to six, 6.3, two fiftieth of a second. Probably get a bit closer actually. That's more like it. Focusing on the crook of that tree. Yeah, well one click up and then angle the camera down reduce that light that way refocus okay hmm tough 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 conditions today and actually the reason for it is because we don't have canopies yet there's nothing to diffuse the light, so, well, we don't have much canopy yet, there's some, but for the old oaks, they're quite late bloomers, and, uh, yeah, it takes a while. Yeah, I can't shoot these today. These light conditions are just too harsh, and, uh, because the, the canopies haven't bloomed fully or at all in some places, it looks very, very sparse. It seems odd to me this year. It does, it feels very strange. I expect more by this time of year. We're at the end of April now. And I, I'm always, ooh, easy. I always expect more than I should because it's not particularly late or anything. I've just, I don't know. It feels weird this year. Carry on mooching for a while, having a hunt around. I might get a shot over here on these these boys. Just because there's less sky involved. If I get in quite close and coming from an angle over here somehow, try and join those trees together. Something like that. And then you know what, I think I'm gonna call it a wrap because I didn't want to make a longer video this week, I wanted it to be a bit shorter. I need to give some thought to how I'm going to do POV videos here. I could really do with two GoPros, one for me and one for the POV footage. So <laughs> we'll see. We'll see about that. Anyway, I'm going to get a shot on these boys. Uh, compose a little gallery for any images that I've got that haven't appeared already because I'll probably pop a few up as I've gone through the woods. Next week, I want to say it's going to be street photography and it may be but we'll see we'll see what happens with the weather i'm keen to get some spring woodland shots in and it's it feels quite hesitant it's like uh as i say the, the, the canopies aren't coming on as strong as i expect by this time so it's a bit it feels a bit strange to me so I, I'm, I'm eager to be on the money when it kicks off i want to be back here and i want to be shooting again 
Right, I think that's enough waffle. Personal ninjas. Call this one a wrap. Take a shot on these fellas behind me. And probably that prehistoric monster up there. And then come back next week with something a bit different. So, till then, thank you very much for watching. Please take care of one another. And if you can't be good, just be careful. And I'll see you very soon. Bye for now. Vagina.